It's no surprise that I like optical mechanical keyboards. I've reviewed a whole load of them, from Corsair's insanely expensive K100 to the truly innovative Wooting 2. And it's the latter of those that the new Razer keyboard, the Huntsman V2 Analog, seems to have taken after quite a lot. All of the features that the Wooting has, the dual step actuations, adjustable actuation points, and full analog Xbox controller input, are all present in this new Huntsman V2 Analog, and we're going to take a look at it in this video to see if it's worth the whopping £250 price tag. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Let's start by showing you around the board first. It's a standard layout keyboard, standard full size with no extra keys like macros, only a couple of media keys up at the top right with a sort of notchy scroll wheel for adjusting volume and a mute button in the middle of that. Otherwise, like I said, it's a standard layout. Mine is the UK layout, which of course I prefer being from Britain, but you can get it in layouts for your region as well. One of the definitely unique features is actually the wrist rest that comes included in the box. Now, they have uh, sort of adjusted the design such that there is a bit more of padding up at the top without a, a lip around the side, which is nice, but the main thing is the fact that even the wrist rest now has RGB. There are some contact pads on the back of the wrist rest and on the front edge of the keyboard that when the wrist rest magnetically snaps into place, those power the RGB in the wrist rest and you get a nice little light around the edge. You do also get a USB 3 pass-through on the left-hand side of the keyboard, which is a nice addition. Most USB pass-throughs on keyboards are USB 2, so having USB 3 is it's pretty sweet. There is actually two entirely separate cables that come out from the top left hand side of the keyboard. They're actually incredibly long and the fact that they don't diverge at any points uh, or you know, stick together at any point makes them a little bit sort of gangly but either way one of them is a USB type C. That's the one that powers and controls the keyboard itself and then there is a USB type A header that controls the, the USB 3 pass through. Don't worry if you don't have USB-C on your PC, you can just connect the adapter that they include in the box, but it is a little strange that one of them is USB-A and one of them is Type-C. I'm not quite sure why they didn't go with either both Type-C or both Type-A and I guess just include two adapters in the box. But other than that, the keyboard looks pretty, I guess, standard. Doesn't look like there's anything overly fancy about it. No, all of the magic comes from these. These are Razer's own analog mechanical key switches. Uh, they aren't like the flare tech switches that Wu Ting use. They seem to essentially still use a, uh, an infrared beam that crosses the, the bottom of the switch, but instead of it just being an on off proportion, it seems like they block a part of the light or uh, deflect part of the light, uh, depending on how far down the travel you are to register. Well, how far down the travel you are. The actuation point starts at 1.5 millimeters and goes all the way down to 3.6, which is plenty for fast and tactile gameplay or deep typing and the multiple uh, key presses, multiple actions per key press, which we'll talk about more in a second. In terms of the new features that these this new style of switch affords, like I said at the start, there are three main ones. I want to start with the adjustable actuation point. This is essentially the most basic of, of the features, which is that uh, instead of having a fixed actuation point like a standard cherry switch, or even like Corsair's OPX switches, which just have a fixed beam that doesn't move at all, because these can read how far down the travel you are, you can pick at what point down the travel, whether right up at the top or right down at the bottom, the keyboard chooses to actuate whatever key you're pressing. What that means is that for fast and tactile gameplay, you can set the actuation point nice and high and then switch profiles to use a fairly low actuation point if you want to hammer type away. The way that Razer lets you set this up in their software is a little bit convoluted. There's kind of a few more steps than I would like and once you get your head around why they've done it that way, it kind of makes sense, but there's definitely a few changes that I would like to see. Now the way that you set it up right now is you click on any of the keys on the keyboard that you'd want to change and you have a slider to change where the actuation point for that specific key is. 
If you want to set the actuation point for all of the switches, you go to any one of them, set it to a given level, and then press the sync button, and that syncs the actuation point for all of the keys. I do believe that that resets any of your uh, adjusted actuation points though, so do keep that in mind. Now either way, you can adjust it per key, which is definitely a nice benefit. The thing that I would like to see changed here is the ability to have a slider on the main page without having to click on any of the keys to globally set the overall uh, you know, actuation points or even minimums and maximums perhaps instead. Uh, that would be a much nicer and easier to use feature than having to go into every key or individual keys, set it, and then uh, sync it across keys. It doesn't quite make sense when you first start using it. Now, the benefit for having per key is actually pretty cool. See, what you can do is if you're kind of used to accidentally fat fingering and pressing T when you meant to press R to reload in games and it opens the text window and you have to press enter and you inevitably get killed because you're now not playing the game or not walking around. Uh, if that is a regular occurrence for you and maybe you just can't uh, easily get to that, then you can set the actuation point for the T key to be all the way down at the bottom so that you can still press T to type what is going to be hate comments uh, to your, your teammates or to your, your opponents, but uh, if you're just spamming the R key, you're a lot less likely to actuate the T button instead. The next feature is the analog input. This is something that we've seen on a number of keyboards and this is the, the feature that I'm honestly least excited about. In theory, it's a really cool thing. Being able to map exactly how far down the travel you are to Xbox controller inputs, in theory, lets you have proportional control of your character or cars in racing games. But in reality, Having the dexterity to act properly control how far down on a key travel you are just doesn't really work out. Add on top of that the 1.5 millimeters of dead zone at the top and it makes it almost impossible to genuinely and uh, effectively control your character with a sort of modular fashion, more so than just using a proper joystick. Don't get me wrong, it can be good and you can get used to it. In a game like Project Cars 2, for example, uh, being able to proportionally control the steering rather than just stabbing it on and off to make a turn nicely is a nice benefit. But if you've got £250 to spend on a keyboard, I would just buy a reasonable you know, 50 or £100 keyboard and then buy a Logitech G920 and you're spending about the same amount of money but you have a much better experience. You could also argue that it can be useful for games like CSGO where you can quietly step around or gently sidestep while you're aiming down sight with a sniper so that you don't lose any accuracy. But you can do that by holding shift and Otherwise, like I said, it's very difficult to actually proportionally control it. And so for me, I couldn't see myself using this feature all that much. But the feature that I could see myself using the absolute most is the multiple actions per key press one, or uh, Razor call it the dual step actuation. What that means is that, let's say you've got the, the W key, right? Normally just pressing the W key will mean you walk forward and if you want to sprint in games you normally have to hold shift as well. But with this dual step actuation you can set the top actuation points that just as you get to that 1.5 millimeters or anything below it to uh, be pressing W. So if you're lightly pressing on the key you can be normally walking forward. And then the bottom action of that key press, you can set a shift and W so that you can, if you're full pressing, sprint without having to bother pressing shift as well. There is also some other ways that you could go about do using that feature. For example, planting the bomb in CSGO normally requires you to switch to the bomb as your, your weapon of choice, essentially, then hold a key to plant it. But, with this, this extra feature, you could set a key to, at the very top, right as you just press it, it will press five to, to select the bomb as your selected weapon. And then when you get to the bottom, it will hold the E key to plant it. So that instead of having to do two actions, you now just press one key and it gets the bomb out and plants it for you all with one press. Unfortunately, the way that Razer lets you map these keybinds is an absolute nightmare and is far too convoluted and complicated. Instead of adding a new list in the options of things that you can map to keys that would say multi-action or dual step, instead 
If you wanted to map that uh, Shift and W to the bottom of the W key stroke, then you would go to click on W in the, the window for the keyboard. That would open a side window. You then have to not do it from default. You have to go to keyboard function, remap W by pressing W on the keyboard, then click secondary action, then you can click, uh, press Shift and W on the keyboard, then you can press save. And also, if you accidentally bind some keys in the wrong order, maybe you uh, are setting up that CSGO bomb planting one and you put the use key as the first action and the swap to the bomb key as the second one, just by accident, you have to manually rebind those rather than having a, a nice button in the middle that you can press swap and it will swap them around for you. And they also decided to limit what things you could bind as a secondary option. If you bind a keyboard function as the primary one, say with W key, then you cannot bind anything other than a keyboard function as the second option, or apparently a brightness function for you know, keyboard lighting. Why just those two? Anyway, the end result is that you get a really useful feature and actually a couple of useful features, especially in the actuation points and the multi-actions. Um, and so for me, this is a really nice gaming experience. Playing with it, even without any of the, the extra features enabled, is still a good enough experience. It still feels like a, a pretty decent and fast play. The fact that you can set the actuation point so relatively high makes it nice and snappy for gaming. There are also linear switches, which again is pretty decent for gaming too. And so it feels pretty good. And as for typing, that's decent as well. They feel pretty similar to standard cherry red switches, maybe a touch heavier, which I actually personally prefer. And overall, it's pretty decent. Uh, like I said, the layout is, is good for me. The only thing that got me, or, or I, I suppose turned me off of this, was the sound. This thing is incredibly loud, considering this isn't even a, a clicky or tactile keyboard. Seriously, have a listen. If you can get past the noise, this is a decent board to have, both for gaming and for work. It's a good experience, and the, the added features that the new Switches offer are definitely a good value add, something that I couldn't necessarily say about Corsair's K100, as the, the features that that had didn't really seem to well, add all that much. But with this one, it's a pretty decent experience. The only problem is that, like I said, the features that this offers are pretty much identical to the ones that Wu-Tang offer with their Wu-Tang 1 and Wu-Tang 2 boards. And the Wu-Tang 2, which is the, the sort of direct comparator to this, sells for around 140 pounds. That is over 100 pounds less than one of these. And as far as I can tell, there isn't much difference. So sure, does the Wu-Tang board come with a, a fancy RGB wrist rest? Well, no, in fact, it doesn't come with any wrist rest. And does it have any USB 3 pass-throughs? Well, again, no. But does the Razer board let you map key presses both on the way down and on the way back up? Well, no, it doesn't. And is the Razer software much more difficult to use and understand? Also, yes, it, it definitely is. And what I'm getting at here isn't that the Razer board is bad. It's not. It's pretty much identical to the Wooting board, as far as I can tell. They're both a very good gaming experience, and if you had either of them, well, I think you'd have a very good time. But the fact that you can pick up a Wooting board, at least when they're in stock, for over £100 less? Well, I don't really see much of a reason to buy one of these. Personally, I think I would just go and buy a Wooting 2 and a, a nice plush wrist rest and pocket the, I don't know, 80 pounds cash difference. But I guess that's my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Can you see a use case for buying the Razer one over Wooting instead, I guess beyond the badge? Um, if so, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you think of the Huntsman V2 as well. Otherwise, if you want to check out the Huntsman V2, especially because pricing can and does vary depending on when and where you watch this, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below. That will be an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to the local Amazon store where you can see all that good stuff. 
Otherwise, there is plenty of other links in the description you can check out. So if you're enjoying these videos and want to support the channel, then there's affiliate links for people like Overclock GK, there's merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other cool designs, and there's stuff like Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat, and uh, for sponsor-free videos as well, so feel free to take a, take a look. Otherwise, I'm going to leave some more videos on the end card. Since I've talked about the Wooting 2 so much, I have to leave that review up at the top for you, so definitely go check that one out. And like I said, if you're new here and aren't already subscribed, feel free to do so for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.